Okay, eighth time of trying to record this is a charm. Let's kick it off, baby. You guys, this is the 99th episode of Under the Influence Podcast. Like, holy shit, have we arrived? And I'm probably going to get a little emotional. There's going to be a whole lot of celebrations and stories in this Hot Shot episode. And I really wanted to queue up the 100th episode by just sharing six of my learnings from owning my own marketing agency, from being an entrepreneur of six years, and just from being a person with a business, multiple businesses. So I am so excited to kick off this episode, and I'm more importantly so honored that we've reached our 99th episode, and that we have and continue to build a community that wants to learn more about business and wants to learn more about influence and the power of influence and hear from all these incredible entrepreneurs and thought leaders and personal brands and people that are just killing it in the game. So when I sat down to like write this all out, it kind of felt like this was more of like a letter to myself of like remembering these six things that I have learned throughout this time. And there have been so many incredible journeys. There have been so many incredible opportunities and different things that have challenged me. And quite honestly, the last six years, I feel like was more of a personal development phase of my life than it was actually like a business development. I guess I shouldn't say that. They go hand in hand, but I've just learned so much. And if I were to sit down and meet the Whitney from six years ago, I feel like we would not even recognize each other, which is really cool and also kind of terrifying. (laughs) But yeah, I really wanted this hot shot to just be a moment to just reflect and to celebrate and to prepare everyone for the 100th episode because it's going to be epic. But also I feel like this is just something that we should do in our day-to-day lives. I think reflection and celebration is always needed. And I think after hitting so many pivotal points in our lives or, you know, we crush our goals or we hit these achievements. We don't always take a moment to actually sit in it. So consider this a moment for you to also opt into sitting in it and reflecting back on all your incredible accomplishments and the last six years of your life and how much you've grown. So let's kick it off with my first learning. So again, you guys, this is the six major things that I've learned from owning, a mar- from owning a marketing agency and being an entrepreneur. The first one is, it's none of your business what people think of you. Oh, this one is so good. And this one still, I try to practice every single day and it is so hard. It is so fucking hard to bring your brain out of what other people think of you or to act in a way where you're trying to be cautious of other people's thoughts And I'm going to tell you this, there is a whole other world of living in freedom of what people think of you. And quite honestly, it's not hard. I mean, I start, excuse me, whoa, (laughs) quite honestly, it's really fucking hard. Um, What I meant to say there is I think I meant to say it's not easy, but it's really fucking hard to break this behavioral pattern or break or break this way of thinking. And Again, I've always talked about how I've been such a people pleaser. And so I've noticed that throughout the years, there's been quite a lot of patterns of the way that I would act would be out of fear of what people would think of me and how I would show up would be out of fear of not being the best or not being someone, you know, sufficient enough. And all this has done for me is distract me and cause me more pain and slow me down from my true vision. It's really difficult when we find ourselves in positions with people that we love and that we care about and we feel like we're not able to live up to their standards or we feel like, you know, we're really afraid of what they think. And it's really also hard for us to be like, well, I, you know, just don't give a fuck. Just keep doing what you're doing. You know, try to block that out inside of your head. But I think one of the biggest things for me is that I sit down and when I have these moments of, if I find myself down a rabbit hole of, you know, really kind of analyzing what do people think of Whitney Eckes? You know, what, did I show up to that meeting, you know, the right way? Did I say the right words? You know, did I, did I host the podcast the right way? I start realizing that it keeps me small 
and I start realizing that it's, it's energy that is kind of being wrapped up into something that's really not worth my time. And I'm, that's not to say like, don't be kind and don't be considerate of others. But I think at the end of the day, we have to be really clear on what our mission is. Not everyone's going to agree with your actions. Not everyone's going to be your biggest fan. And quite honestly, it's none of your fucking business what those people think. Your job is to be you and your job is to show up in the light that you think that you need to show up in. And this one, again, this is something I'm still learning with. I'm still walking with, but this has been the biggest, honestly, one of the biggest learnings. I mean, it comes up for me with clients. It comes up for with me, you know, in relationships. And a lot of times I have to set aside my ego and really look at, okay, this is going to feel really uncomfortable, but I need to do what I need to do. And I have to really surrender these thoughts of thinking about what other people are going to think. My second learning is you are in the business of people, which is a really funny kind of conflicting number or second point. And I love this one because again, I'm such a people pleaser. And there was this point in my business where I was like, I, I just need to focus like on the business transaction. Like I need to be all business, no emotion. And I remember thinking I was having a really hard time with the people that were in my business, whether it was clients, whether it was teams, whether it was my mentors, my coaches. And I remember thinking that, you know, I couldn't rally this vision. I couldn't get everyone on the same page. And I, I kept coming back to like this, like very harsh energy and this very like masculine, like growth energy, like we're going to do things this way. And like, if you're not meeting these goals, like, you know, it's kind of cutthroat. Like it was just this really harsh energy. And I was trying to suck all the emotion out of it. I was trying to suck all the people and, you know, the, the kind of messiness and the passion and everything out of it. And it wasn't working. And what I've learned from owning a marketing agency, what I've learned with working so many, with so many different types of people is that you are actually in the business of people. I'm not in the business of marketing. I'm in the business of people. I'm in the business of building relationships for the agency. I'm in the business of building a team and making sure that they're taken care of. I'm in the business of creating, you know, a life that people are attracted to, that people want to learn from. I, my whole business is people. It is people. And I remember thinking when I was in this really hard phase in my agency, I was like, well, I'm not good with people. You know, I'm kind of started reflecting back onto these patterns of mine. Like I'm an only child, you know, like I don't have very good interpersonal communication. I, you know, I have a really hard time making really long lasting friends and I'm very, very quick to cut off relationships. And I, I'm a cold person. I, I remember I was creating all these really false narratives for myself. And I remember thinking like, I'm not good with people. I'm good at business, but I'm not good with people. And quite honestly, that's one of the biggest lies I've ever told myself. I'm actually great with people and I'm actually great with relationships and I'm great at leading and I'm great at leading people and rallying a team. But I remember thinking that there was this shift that had to happen. And this shift actually came toward the end of last year and beginning of this year where I started recognizing that this agency is built off the people underneath it. And it would not be what it is today without the people that are inside of it, but also the clients that we service. And this agency also wouldn't be a thing for all the people that are around in my life, whether it's my family, my friends, my mentors, my colleagues, people that I see once in a while at a networking event. This agency would not be shaped and be functioning the way it is. And neither would my life as an entrepreneur without all of those people. And I think that's really powerful to kind of sit and look at, especially as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, we are literally in the business of people and the lies that we tell ourselves about our relationships toward other people need to go. And this was again, a mindset shift that I had to make. And once I made it, things started flowing. And I also was allowing myself to open up to these new ideas of like, who I work best with, what kind of people do I want in my life? You know, if I'm in the business of people, who am I calling in? And from there, things just started shifting. You know, I 
haven't really talked much about Get Super and adding in of a new team, and I'm not quite ready to share all those details yet. But I remember when I chose to make, when I made this shift of understanding who I was in business with and then understanding that I really wanted help with Get Super, I called someone in like that. You can say it was manifesting. You can say it was my network. I don't really care what you say, but that shift brought in people so quick. And it not only brought in people for Get Super, but it brought in people for Ekis Marketing. It brought in new people for my own life. And these people from that moment, from like October, November of last year till now, have been so instrumental in the, in the successes of this year that it's absolutely mind boggling to me that that just came from a simple shift and also came from me recognizing that I don't have to tell and beat myself up and lie to myself about these things that I feel insecure about, especially in my relationships with people. Number three, this one's a good one because I feel like I preach this, but also it's just a really friendly reminder for all of us that communication is key. I went to a CEO school um, recently and we talked a lot about communication with our teams and we talked a lot about communication in our life and calling things in. And it was really powerful because we really outlined the way in which as leaders, we communicate what things need to get done. And we hold that vision. We hold that space for our team. And more recently, I actually had on another founder on the podcast where she said, if you think you're communicating enough, communicate more, double it. I love this so much because I think honestly believe that as human beings, when we are communicated to, we lose or we gain or we, we capture about maybe 75% of what the person's actually saying. And in business, communication is so key. And I'm starting to learn that there's this whole art in communication. And I've been studying a lot of founders. I've been studying a lot of clients that I've been working with. And I've been just really listening to people and really watching the way they work. And some of the best businesses with the best teams, they beat a dead horse with what they are saying. It is so crystal clear. It is repeated abundantly that it is, it almost, it's just kind of wild that there's just so much communication in what they're doing, but also to what comes from it and what comes of it. I just feel like this also applies to relationships. I'm a great communicator. I am, but I have like my flaws. And one of my biggest flaws is that when a communication or a form of communication feels like it's going to be too hard, I avoid it. When I feel like I'm going to have to go through this, you know, confrontation, or I feel like I'm going to have to express what I truly want, or I feel like it might upset someone, or it might be not, they don't share the same view on what I'm going to be communicating with them with. I avoid it and I save it until the very last minute and it tends to cause more harm than good. And it's just that that avoidance tactic that we do when we don't want to be doing something, but what I have learned is that if I over communicate, if I over correct, if I over talk about the things that I'm needing and share my thoughts and share my vision, those things come more to life in such a quicker, easier way than it would be of me being fearful and not speaking up. And again, as maybe this is more of a woman perspective, but from what I feel as a woman, I, sometimes I feel like we're not always heard. And there's not always too much weight to our words. And especially in a business setting, sometimes there, we have to like lean so heavy into this masculine energy in order for us just to be heard, in order for our words to just land. That's hard. Last week, I've set so many boundaries with this client. I've been so clear. I have beat the horse dead. And one of them walked up and asked for a discount on a service package. After we had gone through for years, this conversation of Echo's Marketing does not discount our services. I'm sorry. These are the base level services. There's a reason they're priced at what they're priced at. If you'd like another package, we can discuss it. And plain as day in front of 
my team in front of other clients, they walked right up to me and asked point blank as if all of this had not been previously discussed. It is not only so disheartening, but it feels like such a slap in the face when this happens to us in business. And a lot of times, I think again, as women, we feel this need where we're like, well, shit, maybe I should back down. Maybe I should give them a discount. Maybe I'm not, maybe I'm doing some, maybe I'm the problem. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. And it's so fucked up that we think that way because we're not doing anything wrong. So all that to say is communication here is huge. It is major. And it is something that is going to better your life by learning how to over communicate. Number four. Whoa, we are already on number four. Also, I have the dogs in the office today, so no one tell. <laughs> number four. If you want to grow, be prepared to crumble. Oh my God. This is one of the hardest things. I went through this last year. I had this incredible opportunity. I was going to take it. I was going to move and transition a lot of the businesses that are, I already had set up and running. And um, I was calling in like a huge quantum leap, leap in my life. Like I was praying and I was like, God, like I'm, everything has to change. Like we are changing, we are moving. Everything is moving toward like, you know, the good for all, but like my life is not going to look the same as it did last year. I'm done. So like, let's fucking go. Like, let's do this. When I tell you that everything crumbled underneath me, everything crumbled. I ended up taking pretty much all of December off to just <laughs> process. And it was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do because when you're offered such an incredible opportunity and it doesn't work out and you're betting on it and you're calling it in and you crumble, you crumble fucking hard, especially when it was going to change your entire life. From that point, my entire life did change. I've never received so many incredible opportunities by that deal falling through. I've never made so much more money. I've never had so much more freedom and I've never been so passionate about these next steps and these next projects that I'm working on. I had to crumble in order for this beautiful new empire to be built and it sucked <laughs> because sometimes I think we just want to be on like autopilot and my god like again like after six years I'm not gonna lie to you there are days where I don't want to show up I mean, duh, we, there's days where we all don't want to show up, but there's like days where I'm like calling Spencer crying, being like, can we just go move to Mexico and live in Mexico and like I'll open a bar and like, I, I don't care. Like we'll make money. I don't know, doing something, but like, I don't want to do this anymore. And especially during those moments of crumbling, I realized that like the only reason why these things crumble, the only reasons why these things fall away is because it's making room for something greater to come through. And that sounds like such a bullshit excuse for you going through a shitty time in your life. But at the end of the day, this has happened so many times to me that I'm like, this is the only way. That's the only way that it makes sense. And it does. And every single time something absolutely shitty happens, something amazing comes through. And that's just, I mean, again, that you have to take on your own and really tr feel, truly feel out if that works for you. But for me, that, that has been something that has been so in line with my faith and with my story and that I literally have to choose to believe in or else what's the point? What's the point if there's not a greater mission on the other side? Number five is don't be the boss you think you should be. Be the boss that you needed. I'm probably going to cry on this one. <laughs> oh, I feel like normally I'm so much more high energy. I just, this is, like I said, this is a heavy episode. This is pulling on my heartstrings. Okay. Um, I remember every single time that I've quit a job. I mean, don't we all, right? We remember every single moment. We remember every single moment that we've gotten fired. Remember the first time I got fired? Um... 
and how traumatic that felt. And I remember thinking, I'm like such a shitty human. Even when I quit or even when I was fired, both times. I just remember feeling like I, after both of those times, like I wasn't, I didn't know what I was going to do. And now being in the position where I have to hire and I have to fire, it's really enlightening. You hold a little bit of power over someone else's life. And that is a really awful responsibility to have. Now, on the other side of that, you also hold power and responsibility over your life and your business. And ultimately, at the end of the day, you have to decide what's going to be the best for both, for the person and for the business. I've had to make incredibly hard decisions. And I remember that one of my biggest learnings is to let my heart guide me in this process and to not be the boss I think I should be, but to be the boss that I need to be. And when I say that, a lot of times I would look for outside opinions on what was going on internally inside of my business. I, was, I would look for a lot of justification for what I'm doing. And I wouldn't really listen to like my own intuition. And I wouldn't really trust myself that I was making the right decision. And this has been one of the most profound lessons that I've had to learn. Because not only was it about the business, and yes, if it was about the person, whether I was hiring or firing them, but it was so much deeper on what does Whitney truly think? And what do, how does Whitney really need to truly show up here? Making those decisions with people within your business is one of the hardest things I think any entrepreneur or boss has to do. It is. It, like, it just is. And it grows you incredibly. And it teaches you so much about yourself and about what you truly believe in and about the confidence in your own trust in yourself that the only way that and the only way that I've been able to get through this is to look at being the boss that I needed. When I look back at those times of me being this rambunctious, wild employee that was always late, that did everything wrong, that literally did not give a shit. I'm very proud of the people that did fire me. I'm very, very, very thankful and grateful for the people that hired me because they saw something more. I'm exceptionally grateful for people that tested me and that challenged me and that asked me to give more because they knew they had, I, they knew I had it in me. As a boss or anyone in a leadership role, I challenge you to look at that. I challenge you to take yourself out of the equation in the sense of what is the right thing to do here and to look inside yourself of what did I need in those moments? Did I need a mentor? Did I need someone that was going to get me off a track that I'm on? Did I need someone to give me a shot and an opportunity just to fucking shine for once? And that for me has been some of the deepest, wildest inner child work and growth that I've ever experienced. Working with other people, being responsible for their jobs and giving them a shot and or letting them know this is no longer a fit is some of the hardest work that you, anyone will ever have to walk through. But it is also incredibly fulfilling. And I also want to preface this with this experience does not have to be awful. It gets to be empowering for both you, for the business, and for the people. And when I say that, I mean that in the deepest way. Allowing our egos to feel into emotion. Allowing our egos to feel into insecurity of like, am I making the right decision? Allowing ourselves to tell ourselves lies like we are such a bad person or we didn't hire the right way or we didn't try we didn't train the right way or this isn't working because I'm not good enough is all bullshit. And that is exactly the work that we are doing as entrepreneurs, as people in leadership, as people that are just career driven or anyone that has to make has to work with people in their day to day or manage people. That's just that one got me. Whew. <laughs> Okay, number six. You guys, we made it. We made it, Rowdy, to number six. Number six is, 
failure. And I am going to call this on the carpet because I'm kind of over this bullshit narrative. And I'm going to call it out for clients that are listening, for my team members that are listening, for any, for my family, for my friendships, for anyone that is listening to this. I have been living in this narrative where I feel like I have grown businesses and have made a lot of mistakes and some of them being that they are failures. There was this moment where someone DM'd me and it absolutely broke my heart where I was teasing an announcement and someone DM'd me, oh, you're shutting down Echis Marketing. I was so hurt and felt so insecure and felt like, wow, is that what is that what everyone really thinks? Like, do they think that Echis is a failure? I've had clients make mention about the agency being small, about me needing them as a client. And quite honestly, I'm going to look this narrative that I've been living for the last six years in the fucking face and say that this is a damn lie. I may not have built the biggest agency. And I may not have every five-star client on the roster, or maybe I don't have a team of 150 people, or maybe I don't clear, you know, 10, 12 million a year. But I'll tell you what, I guess marketing has never been a failure. Not to me, not to my clients, and not to my team. Especially the people that it puts food on their tables and it pays their bills. And it pays mine. And I got some big bills, let me tell you. <laughs> Get Super is not a failure because it didn't make it into every retail store. Yet. Get Super is not a failure because we had to learn the hard way what it's like to do direct to consumer for a CBD company. Get Super is not a failure because I stepped down as CEO and I asked for help. See, this last lesson is the biggest lesson. And it's the biggest lesson for me because the last six years I have felt like a failure more than I felt like a success. And there's moments where I feel successful and there's moments where I feel empowered, but I have been living in this narrative that I'm a failure or that I'm not good enough or I'm not part of the top percent of entrepreneurs, of businesses, of just people. And what I've come to learn after doing this for six years is that failure is not trying. Failure is not even going for it. Failure is being so scared that you're going to mess up and so afraid to take the next step or the leap of faith or anything that you just don't do it. Failure is being a coward. I am not a fucking coward. <laughs> and you are not a fucking coward. I would say that we're both success stories. I'd have to say. Because even if one day all of these things go away and I don't have the podcast and I don't have the businesses and I don't have any of these projects that I feel so passionate about, and that I feel like they're part of my mission, I would say I still went out there and I still fucking tried. And I still got to build something. And I still got to learn so many beautiful things and meet so many beautiful people. And all of that is so worth it. To wrap up this last one, let me give it to you straight. You, the narrative inside your head about you being a failure is not true. The narrative that you've been telling yourself that you don't look exactly like another business or you don't look exactly like another entrepreneur or another creator or just another person is not true. You are you. You can never be those other things, just like they can never be you. And the biggest part of all this is to learn that the only thing the only thing that failure truer it truly is, is not trying. It's not going for it. It is not 
It is not giving yourself the opportunity to at least try to leave the nest and flap your wings and fly. That's, that's the only failure in this life. And you've already, you've already done it. You've already gone for it. Every single day, you waking up and taking a breath and deciding that you're going to live another day is courage in and of itself. I heard this really awesome interview with Tinks on her podcast. And I remember her talking about this, um, this concept. She calls it Cringe Mountain. And she talks about how in 2020, she went after really trying to be like, you know, a content creator because like it was 2020 and like what's everyone else going to be doing? And so she heard this term, you know, cringe mountain of like success lies on the other side of cringe mountain and how cringe mountain is getting out there and doing the thing that you feel like is the cringiest or you feel like people are going to look at you and be like, what the fuck is she doing? Like she has no business doing this. And like kind of that judgment, like that cringe aspect. And I love that she says that success is on the other side of Cringe Mountain because the more people that I've seen that have been cringy, that have done the work, that have never given up, that always continue to show up for themselves and for show up for their dreams and their mission, they always make it to the other side of Cringe Mountain and they always see the success on the other side. And it's because they didn't fucking listen in it to anyone it's because they didn't give in it's because they just kept going because they were going to continue to try and that for me is this new narrative that I look at from today forward for the next six years is failure is not this aspect or this measurement of success failure is simply not showing up for myself and not trying I think that about wraps this episode. (laughs) Woo! We went through all the emotions and the feels, you guys. I just thank you so much for listening and for showing up and being such an incredible part of my community. Um, I'm so honored and so blessed to have built this show and have done 100 episodes and to have continuing to climb up Cringe Mountain, honestly. I um I I I love ending the shows with, you know, a hot shot testimonial and um make sure to you guys please screenshot your testimonial and DM it to me if I read it. That way we can give you a lovely Amazon gift card um just to say thank you. But, you know, I really love reading your guys' reviews and I love hearing the feedback on the episode and how it's impacted you and what you feel and what you like about it. And This one, more specifically, really just kind of hit me in the feels. So this testimonial is titled, My Younger Self Needed This Podcast. Whitney brings such authenticity and lightness to her interviews and solo episodes. I love her perspective on navigating life and work and everything that comes with big goals in both arenas. A must listen for ambitious women. Thank you so much, Larstar11. You are truly a gem. And to all of you guys, thank you guys so much for being here, for showing up to the 99th episode. And more importantly, thank you for going under the influence with me.